doing when it comes to legal matters. And I believe we may have Miss Heather on the line right now. And we're going to go right to our guest tonight, Miss Heather Nelson Beverly. How are you doing, Heather? Hi, Tracy. How are you? I'm doing really good. Thank you so much for being on the show and allowing me to speak with you. I know you are a busy lady with all of the <laughs> clients you have all over the world, not just the country, because I know you are <laughs> connected to everybody. How has your week been so far? It's been really good. It's a busy one. Seems to be uh, that kind of a week, but we push through, we push through. But this is what you do. You are an expert at this because you're celebrating 20 years with your own law firm. Is that correct? Yes. This is anniversary, which freaks me out. <laughs> it does. <laughs> <laughs> to think that much. You said to think that you've been doing it this long? Yes, to think that it went this kind of... Um, Overwhelming, but I'm blessed. And I'm uh oh, hello, Heather, are you there? I am here. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I lost you. Well, I thank no, you. No, I was getting a lot of feedback, though. I don't know if it's. Oh, are you? Are you? Like it, it sounds like it fixed itself. Okay. Well, you're celebrating 20 years. I'm excited because that I have you on the show as we celebrate you as well as being, I keep saying, one of the most recognizable and distinguished attorneys, entertainment attorneys in the entertainment industry, not just with music, but you are connected to and help so many people um, when it comes to not just legal matters, but setting up deals for them, connecting them to different people who have helped their careers to go further. And you're very successful. If you're celebrating 20 years, that means that people are have been calling you for 20 years and they're still calling you. And I'm glad to have you, you are, have you on the you show. Are. Thank you. You're just making me feel good tonight. <laughs> but it's true. It's very true. Well, Heather, on, on the artist stage, we help artists to become better by giving out tips and information um, so that not only that they can further their careers, but they can be healthy in their careers mentally, emotionally, mm -hmm. um, having a lot of wi obtaining wisdom for the, from those who've been on this journey for a little while and they know what they're talking about. And you're definitely one of those people. And for those who are listening, please share tonight's show because I, I'm going to be asking Heather some very important questions that I know and believe you need to know the answers to if you're trying to be in the music industry or you currently are it's never too late to learn well before I ask you a couple of really deep intense questions <laughs> um, I just want to share with everybody a few of the people that they may know of that you work are currently working with or you have worked with I said that on the show tonight we're playing some some of your favorite songs from the clients that you've worked with we just played JJ Harrison um, and his Hi. song uh, you deserve it. Also, we know you, mm -hmm. you've worked with Miss Anita Wilson, um, yes. Charles Jenkins, Vashon mm -hmm. Mitchell. He had a really big song, Nobody Greater. Oh, also, yeah, my client was Darius Polk who wrote that song, and that was just a monster record for Vashon. Huge. She did an amazing job with that song. Huge. She says her, her client was the songwriter, Darius Polk. So songwriters, I hope you're listening. Um, and so many other people <laughs> that you've worked with. Um, you have, you, you've, you've uh, worked with uh, uh, the songwriting, songwriting group Monsters. Is, ma is it Major? Monsters and Strangers? They've written for quite a few people. Well, they're actually two different um, projection people. So Major, previously known as B Major, he's one of uh, Justin Bieber's main producers. He's produced for a lot of hip people, Rihanna, a lot of big pop R&B folks. Um, and then Monsters and Strangers are actually a collective of producers. Okay. So it's three producers and actually two songwriters, um, and they are out of Miami. And uh, I represent the publishing company that signed them and have had the pleasure of working with them ever since they were, you know, just beginning in the industry all the way to a mega hit that they just recently um, released this year, which is a song called The Metal that is by a group called Zed. And you guys have probably heard it if you've ever seen a Target commercial anytime recently. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's one of the biggest records of the year, and I'm, I'm so proud of them and, and R8D Publishing that publishes them because 
Uh, it's been a long journey with these guys, and they have now produced for everyone from Pitbull to uh, Ciara to uh, Flo Rider, Nelly, um, Maroon 5, Five Seconds of Summer, Fifth Harmony. I mean, just big, big, big records. J-Lo, I could go on and on. Chris Brown, folks like that. <laughs> Everybody. I mean, uh, if you're listening online to the show right now or you're watching, checking that out on Facebook, Heather's, her her career, she said she's, not she said, but I know she's been doing this for 20 years with her own law firm. It shows you the type of integrity and character, not just that she has with her work, her work ethic, but as a person. People just don't work with her just, you know, just because. They actually trust her work, what she says, what she does. And that means a lot, especially if you're an attorney, Miss Heather, which you are. Because sometimes attorneys don't get, you know, a lot of good fleck or, or reputa- their reputations. <laughs> a lot of lawyer jokes out there in the world. <laughs> there are. Unfortunately, you know, the business side of this industry is just not the you know, most glamorous part of it. And so I feel like a lot of times, you know, those of us who are handling the internal business, which is really the foundation of a lot of these uh, creative people's careers, um, you know, it's it's less glamorous part. So it doesn't get the accolades and sometimes catches a lot of flack. But I, you know, I really try to make what I do uh, as enjoyable for my creative clients as it can be while still handling the business and making sure that their needs are taken care of so that they can have the freedom to create and, and do what they do on stage or in the studio or whatever aspect of the arts that they're a part of. And so speaking of those clients, let's answer the question. I want you to answer the question for, for myself and those who are listening and watching. Why do clients such as music artists and record labels, why do they need an entertainment lawyer? Um, it's, a, it's a good question. I'm glad you're asking. And I do want to, by the way, thank you, Tracy, so much for even having me on the show. Um, I really believe passionately in helping people who want to be in the entertainment industries, in particular the music industry, to have proper information about their career and have proper information about the things that, the rights they have and the the art that they're creating and how to protect it. And I feel that a lot of times, you know, the attorneys or the accountants or the financial planners, um, we're not necessarily the first people that, you know, are asked to be on shows like yours and so I really commend you and I really am grateful that you're giving me the platform Uh, but to answer your question the reason that people need an entertainment attorney if they are in the entertainment business um, and and whether they are on the creative side or even on the business side is is simply because this is a business it's the music business Mm -hmm. and our business aspects to every single thing that's being done um, to get to the end result of a creative product. So you figure whether it's from the creation of a song, which once someone creates it and it's original and they record it and it's theirs, they own a copyright to it. Um, The copyright is the thing, it's the right that gives them the platform to do everything they wanna do, to sell music, to perform music, to to license it to other people, to get it out there, and ultimately, right, if this is a business and we're trying to uh, make it a career, earn money from it. And don't understand what it is you're creating and what your ownership rights are and how you make your money in it, um, it's, you know, you're really not handling your business. And it's just so often that I think people think of some of the business professionals last, right? They want to create the art and it's, it's, so much more fun uh, if you're a creative to get in the studio and get on stage and do what you do and um, express your gifts and all of that. And then sometimes the business is an afterthought when really it should be the first thought because if the business isn't handled properly, what you risk are a lot of problems. Right. Um, And again, that's whether you're the creative person or even if you're a label. Uh, And we can kind of talk about that, you know, as we go along. But so many artists now... um, even have to be their own record label these days. That's you know, true. 
and there there are a lot of artists who are operating as their own record label which may be not good could be good or bad depends on you know what the situation is so what do you so for those who who under want to know why they need an, an entertainment lawyer once they bring you on um what do you actually do for them yeah good question i mean it's it's a myriad of services that an uh, entertainment attorney can provide for a client. I think the best way to sort of explain it is really just to sort of give some examples. Okay. Right? So mm-hmm. uh, if, you know, if you're an artist and you're thinking about putting a record together, you want to do your own recording and you want to do it independently. So you're not signed to RCA Inspiration or you're not signed to E1 or you don't have a record deal with a production company or somebody else. But you're like, you know what, I'm, I'm creative enough. I, I can get the resources together and make my own record. Well, I would sit down with the client who says, I'm, you know, I'm doing a record or I've done a record, and I start to ask them questions about it. And so I ask them things like, okay, so who wrote the songs mm-hmm. on your record? And who is playing instruments if you have any live instrumentation? Uh, do you have feature artists? Do you have somebody that's coming in and singing with you or doing a feature or, you know, whether it's a rap feature or a speaking feature or singing, background vocalists? What about a producer? Are you working with a producer? Mm-hmm. Um, about uh, whether or not they're using any samples in, their, in the music that they're doing or doing any remakes of other songs. Um, and so as I start to ask these questions and I get answers, inevitably what happens is that even though the artist might be technically doing their own record, right, mm-hmm. um, they're involving a lot of people. And the fact of the matter is, is that in the art, when you involve other people in the music that you create, um, what's happening is that you're going to need to get permissions and uh, and the and releases and there's paperwork and contracts that right. need to be done with people because they need to know what are the rules of their participation. What are they getting paid? How are they getting paid? When are they getting paid? Mm-hmm. Uh, are they going to give you the right to do with this music that you create that you want to? I mean, I can't tell you how frustrating it's been for clients that sometimes come after the fact and they've got feature, feature artists, for example, on a song. And then I tell them, hey, you know what? That artist is already signed to a record label, which mm-hmm. means they don't have to be recording with you without permission. And so then what happens is I've got to contact the record label. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, Tracy, right now, it is more times than I care to even mention (laughs) where the record label is like, that's fantastic. We're not going to let them use that, though, Mm -hmm. because our artist is coming out with their own album and we're investing all of our marketing dollars right now and so no you can't use that song right now or no you can't have that song be your first single and that's what you were banking on and if you've come to me after the fact right Mm -hmm. you may have already paid that artist you may have already paid for the recording (laughs) Mm -hmm. mix engineers paid the studio time or paid for the venue for your live recording and all of those things flown them in put them up it's it's everything (laughs) that go into that Mm -hmm. and what you know those are just examples, but the long and short of it is, is that an entertainment attorney is going to help you to, number one, understand what needs to be done from a business perspective with the music that you're creating or the projects that you're putting out or the content you're filming, um, any of the art, right, that you're creating, we can help guide you so that you do it right from the beginning. Right. And you don't end spending money maybe you don't have wasted uh, on um, elements that you can't end up using. You are speaking all of my language. I, I wish I could just like <laughs> clap real loud right, right now in the, in the studio. You said so many key things, wasting money and time in the beginning. You don't have to do those things if you would connect with an attorney or learn and find out the information. You are saying everything correct. I, I know you're saying everything right. Um, and I also like what you said about the producers, the songwriters, the singers or guest artists them understanding their role and why they're connected to this project that the artist may be putting out. And that happens through contracts and information. I posted a question on Facebook 
um, I believe you you did see it, and I said, do people, do you think that artists should contract a lawyer prior to recording a project? A lot of people said yes. Some people said maybe, you know, they should look up information on the Internet. And you need to. It's it's so vital, especially if you're in, there's so many indie artists out here who spin their wheels, like you said, pay for the recording, do all these things. And then it's like, oh, man. And then they have people coming after them later on wanting their money, <laughs> you know, and trying to figure out how did this happen. But it all it took was for us to seek out the proper counsel, legal counsel. Yeah, and I don't want to call anybody out, but there was one of your um, listeners who commented and said, well, you know, I say, you know, they're expensive and maybe you save your money and check, you can research the business on the Internet. And, you know, there are a lot of things you can learn on the Internet, and I always encourage my clients to learn. As a matter of fact, I don't want anyone who, I don't want to have a client that's not willing to learn the business because I personally don't need people running around who don't understand the the business of their chosen career talking about Heather is my lawyer Mm -hmm. (laughs) right (laughs) I would rather know the business so yes you have to do some research on your own and yes you have to uh, educate yourself as best you can but here's the reality Tracy the legal aspects of this business the language is a business generally it's a foreign language Mm -hmm. you know even though you may be immensely talented and, and be gifted with a songwriting ability or production talent or performance talent, um, doesn't just automatically mean you know the language, right? Yep. You still just have to still uh, rehearse if you're a musician or, or do vocal training um, if you're a, a vocalist mm-hmm. or you know, continue to find out what the latest trends are um, if you're writing, right? No mm-hmm. matter what you do, there's still more you've got to learn. And you can't just take for granted that it's going to be easy to understand because, quite frankly, there are elements of the music industry, music publishing, um, p- the payment of royalties, how people get paid in this industry uh, that are that can be very complicated. Right, that's And true. why not the advice and counsel of someone who can lead you down the path and direct you to do it right from the beginning and help you. I mean, the point is we're here to help. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes lawyers get a bad rap that we're just making the business more complicated or, you know, getting in the way and killing deals or slowing up the process. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day, I don't know too many people in this business who, when they show up to perform, they're not expecting their check. Yes. (laughs) Record is they're not expecting that distributor to send them their money when the sales happen. Mm-hmm. And the same should be true for the artist who engages their own people or the independent label that's hiring their own people. They are responsible yes. for understanding what those obligations are to others. That you are. Can you say that one more time? The people, the independent artists who are operating as record companies are what again? <laughs> are responsible for... Have, handling the business of the people that they engage with. Yes. So they're, they have responsibilities and obligations to those people who participate on their projects. They've got a, a obligations to, to pay those people. They've got obligations to uh, sometimes give proper credit to those people, uh, their obligations, even if it's, you know, my favorite is this. Well, I paid them, so it's mine. No. And people don't understand that the chain of ownership when it comes to master recordings or when it comes to the songs you write, Mm -hmm. the chain of ownership. Chain of ownership. From paperwork. You know, a a copyright is like a house. I don't know uh, if you have ever bought or sold a house Mm -hmm. uh, or known someone who has, but Mm -hmm. when they go sit down at the thing, they've got to sign all this paperwork. Yes, ma'am. Well, paperwork involved in, for example, buying a house, which is property, Mm -hmm. because... The founders of this country said property is what values us, right? Mm -hmm. So whether you have land, whether you have cattle uh, in a very unfortunate time in our history, if you own slaves, (laughs) Mm, uh, whatever it was that you claimed as property valued you. It, It valued your worth. And so, especially when it came to real property like homes and land, the, the law requires 
that the transfer of that property is done in writing. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to sell your house and it's not in writing, it's actually not even a valid transfer. The same thing holds true with what we call intellectual property. So this property we own that comes from our creativity and our minds. Mm -hmm. Everything that you associated with the ownership of that property has to be in writing. So just because you paid somebody to come in and, and produce your song, if you don't have a document that says you now own those masters, there could be trouble there because they were a part of the creative process. And people don't know that. They don't. They need to. They don't. I <laughs> hope that everyone is listening. Please share tonight's show. If you have any questions, please call in 312-629-4499. We have a, a gem on the line right now, Mrs. Heather Beverly. She is a gold mine, gem, diamond, everything. And she's giving out some great information. I see Adrian B. King from Chicago just joined the show, Miss LaVonja Hubbard. These are people who are watching, checking that out on Facebook. Um, Heather, Angie Frazier, I know that you're an independent artist. LaVonja, hey, how you doing, LaVonja? Please share tonight's show. This is what you all need to be listening to. The selfies and everything are cool. You can take all these good pictures at these events, but you need to get this type of information because there are a lot of projects being recorded right now as we speak. I'm not speaking of specific people, but in general, who are just haphazardly having conversations. Can you produce this for me? I got you and and thinking it's okay. And she just made it plain and clear. It's not. It's not valid. And so pretty much because you don't know who owns the masters, but we're we're so such in a rush to put out music and I, I make the, I try to give this statement Heather to the artists that I work with. I'll tell them, don't allow pressures to create unnecessary timelines for you. So mm -hmm. pressures that don't exist, pressures right. such as social media, <laughs> you know, Deadline. right? And they be, they create these timelines that don't exist, and so we feel like oh, I got to put this out, I got to put this out when nobody's checking for you. Literally, right. build up that demand, get the legal counsel that you need before you just sign, not even sign, have these verbal conversations with people, and then now they're looking for their money because you got signed to Sony or whoever it may be, and now they feel like you ripped them off. But <laughs> I could go on and on. But I have a couple scenarios for you, Heather. So I don't, I'm sure you're aware of uh, Sony recently sold their share of Spotify, and mm -hmm. and they they promised, or I'm sure it was in a legal document, that they would give out, um, not just give out, but pay out a portion to the indies and artists connected to them. Now, regarding having legal counsel, if you're an indie or a, a label, I'm not going to necessarily ask you how does that work, but that's mm -hmm. those are a lot of different parties involved. Is that yeah. something that could go well, on I forever? I firsthand that they're actually honoring that, um, they're honoring that uh, promise because they've been sending out correspondence to hmm. uh, people assigned to them, artists, and uh, even some, you know, they have label affiliates and so forth, you know, people mm -hmm. that they distribute and all of that, and they've sent out correspondence that says, hey, you know, we sold a part of our interest uh, in Spotify and we profited uh, heavily, and we want to share that those profits with the people who are in business with us. And so they, you know, I of course don't know what kind of formula they've amassed and how they're distributing it, but not only are they distributing those funds mm -hmm. to artists, other people affiliated with the label, but they're also um, going to distribute it whether or not your account with them is recouped. Wow. So even if are unrecouped, which is uh, almost everybody on any everybody. label. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> it's an ongoing thing. By the way, listeners, unrecouped means you still owe them. You have, Your sales from your record, for example, have not yet paid back the money that they spent making it. Right. Um, and so if you're in that predicament, which is, you know, often the case for most artists. Most, 99%. Um, they're still going to share those profits. It's, it's not like they're going to say, oh, we were going to give you $10,000, but you still owe us 100 so we're going to keep it. They really are passing through those profits to um, to their affiliates. And would you say that's rare? I, I would think so. Does that happen often? Well, you know, I think that the, the, in, the whole type of profit that they made on the mm -hmm. success of Spotify mm -hmm. um, is rare in and of itself, right? Okay. But if you think about 
fact that record labels and distribution companies are always, you know, acquiring other catalogs or investing in things. They're in the business to profit. And so, you know, are they normally just sharing the, their profits from their business with the artists and the talent? No. No. <laughs> um, they're not. So, I mean, this is a it's, a, it's a pretty big move. And even in the letter that they've circulated amongst um, those who are entitled, they say, you know, we really look at this as a showing of good faith on our part that mm-hmm. we value the relationships and with the content creators that make this whole machine possible. And, you know, of course, you know, that doesn't mean I, you know, now think that these major label corporations are, are going to start. And all, all, but it is a lovely gesture. It is. It's a very lovely gesture. It's a rare, it's rare. And it's, it's a very lovely gesture because. Off of un, unrecouped money, <laughs> or because, like you said, that's that's that doesn't happen. Artists, you, you'll hear artists say all the time. A lot of them say, "I'm in this deal forever for life," and it's kind of I won't say the truth, but that's you know, as long as you keep making projects and they put money into the project, you know, they want them. Unless you get, I don't say drop from the label, but your contract is no longer. Um, so this is this is very rare. I have another, well, that was kind of a scenario, but more so a question. But I do have a scenario for you. Um, I want to deal with the indie artists because we have so many independent artists out here. Um, uh, Independents say they they recently uh, recorded a project and they have uh, musicians and background singers. Because I want to kind of deal with those who may not be um, that connected to a label yet. But... Well, they have, they, like you said, when you're an independent artist, you are the label. But they have musicians and songwriters, not songwriters, musicians, obviously, and background singers. Now, if the producer, they hire the producer, should the artist have contracts and paperwork with the producer as well as the singers and uh, musicians? What is the f- chain of command for that? Is it the artist, producer, and then the, the individuals connected? Should the artist still be, and also should the artist still be connected and informed? Say, if the producer they 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 have the contracts sent out from them to the singers and musicians, should the artist still be connected in some type of way legally? What would the chain of command yeah. be for that? That's a fantastic question, um, and and a very very important one. And it's it, it's also really good to if you just think of kind of the basics of what happens really in almost any recording, right? Mm-hmm. The, and, and, and we're talking about an independent artist, so whenever they decide to get in the studio, what are they doing? They're working with folks. Right. Um, first rule of thumb is this. If you're an independent artist and you're doing your own recording, you must think of yourself as a record label because when you do your recording at the end of the day, what you want to do is own the results of your work and what you're investing in. Mm -hmm. So you want to be able to say, I finished recording my project, I've mixed it, I've mastered it, and now I'm going to release it and sell it. And in order for you to do that, you have to have the right to do it. And in order to have the right to do it, you have to have permissions from the people who appear on the recording. Mm. Now, the scenario that you gave was, hey, I'm doing my record and I'm going to bring in some background vocalists, I'm going to bring in some live musicians, I also have a producer. Now, two things could happen. Number one, you might hire a producer who has access to musicians and vocalists for you, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes the producer, and they have those relationships, and they're like, look, hire me, pay me my fee, let me do what I do. I'll bring in everything you need to get this recording done. And, And as an artist, you leave that part of the work and the architecture uh, to the producer. Mm-hmm. Well, the producer who, yes, you need to have a contract with um, that outlines what you're paying them and what their responsibilities are and if they're entitled to anything um, from the sales of your record uh, and are they participating in any of the compositions that you're writing or recording for the record. So you'll have a contract with the producer and that contract will most likely say, hey, you're responsible for, if you're hiring people, um, getting all the paperwork from them that says they can be on the record. Um, But it's not good enough to just stop and say, I put it on the producer and that's their job. Mm -hmm. Why? Because ultimately, 
you're the artist that wants to put your record out. Right. And so, again, you have to have the rights to do it. So even if the producer secured those people for you, you want to get p copies of that paperwork. In fact, if you're able to, you want to have reviewed it before they give it to the people. I've seen people who go, yeah, the production company I hired does that all the time. And mm -hmm. then I see the paperwork that the production company had with those people, and it's insufficient, mm -hmm. or it doesn't exist. And ultimately, what happens is this. Here's the, here's, the, here's the best way to play it out, is with the example. You put your record out, mm -hmm. you don't have the paperwork done, and one of the vocalists uh, hears the record when it comes out and goes, gosh, I did that session. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> I should have, I don't, I didn't know that record was coming out. I don't think I ever got paid, or I didn't get paid what I normally get paid. I thought I was just doing a session. Mm -hmm. I, I record is going to come out. I get paid a whole different amount. Mm -hmm. And then the artist, oh, um, we need to talk. Either you owe me more money, or or I didn't give you permission to put that out, or I don't like that mix, or any number of things that someone could say. Well, here's the thing: a vocalist has something called a right of publicity. You can't just use people's likeness, their image, their voice, their, their gifts, if you will, for a commercial purpose and go sell it, and you don't have their permission mm -hmm. in writing. <laughs> so, you know, someone will say, well, they showed up. Of course they knew. Well, not necessarily, right? right. People mm -hmm. are doing demos. People are just doing things they plan to put up on YouTube for promotional reasons. Uh, there's a lot of things that people do mm -hmm. um, before they get to a final recorded project. And what happens is, again, if you don't have the proper paperwork in place, the, the long and short of it is, it can get messy. And there have been very, very, very big records in history that have uh, ended up with cease and desist before they come out. There have been Jay-Z yeah. records, mm -hmm. background singers in the studio who were like, yeah, uh, didn't give you permission for that. And because wow. there was no paperwork, we were able to get settlements in the hundreds of thousands when maybe the session fee could have been 100 bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So you just got to protect yourself up front, set the expectations. And as the independent artist, it's your responsibility. You can't just pass it on to the other people involved in the project and hope they've done right by you. Because you're the one that's ultimately going to put it out, and that puts you on the hook. That may, Please, if you're watching this show or you're listening, tell any and everybody to tune in right now to tabernacleradio.org and watch it and share it on Facebook Live. It's on my Facebook page and the Tabernacle Radio page. You need to hear these things, that this wisdom that Mrs. Heather Beverly is giving out right here on the Artist Stage Radio. Radio show. Heather, can you give that, that word again? It's funny that you did mention about language. The, you mentioned earlier about knowing language and communicating because our affirmation this week is don't just be, become great communicators. Can you give the uh, the word that you said uh, singers have the right of, did you say publicity? Publicity, yeah. It's, so if you just, just think about, uh, let's use the basketball season just ended. Mm -hmm. um, you know, let's just use Steph Curry as an example uh, for the basketball fans out there. You know, Steph Curry is, is uh, in the spotlight. He's uh, got an image in what he does, and you can't just sort of take a picture of Steph Curry, put it on a T-shirt, and start selling them for $50. Right. Um, and have Steph Curry's permission. Okay. That's illegal. You're violating his right of publicity. Okay. Um, and... He could come to you at any time and just shut your operation down. He could stop you from selling it. He could sue you mm -hmm. for damages. In music, you know, you can't just have people's voice and the musicianship um, on your record because here's the thing. What we're creating when we're creating songs, like I said earlier, is we're creating um, ultimately a master right. that is owned by someone. And the master is really owning the copyright to the thing, right? So when you've got the sound recording, that final version you've recorded, mm -hmm. you own the copyright. If you've written the song, the lyrics, and the music, there's a copyright, even we call it the underlying composition. A little bit, you know, getting legal easy, but mm -hmm. it, it, there's a copyright associated with the actual lyrics and music of the song. So when you get people in the studio with you and they are contributing musicianship 
right? They're the guitar player, they're the drummer. Um, uh, they're a singer doing ad libs, right? Mm -hmm. um, there is a possibility that those people could say that they have contributed to the copyright. Um, because everyone gets in as sort of this collaborative effort. We're all creating something. All of our contributions are going into the pot of what ultimately becomes that master or what ultimately becomes that composition. And so the one sure way to know that A, someone's not gonna stake a claim to the property or someone's not gonna say, you know, I didn't give you permission to sell that recording with my voice on it, mm -hmm. my, you know, which is a, my image, my likeness, my right of publicity, um, is have it in writing and to have a document that says, hey, I'm paying you for this session. You've come in uh, to play, to sing. I'm going to pay you a fee for your time, and you are not going to claim any ownership to the end result. Right. And I'm going to own the property because... Here's what a lot of people, I think, don't understand about what a copyright is, Tracy. Mm -hmm. I think they don't understand that a copyright really is just sort of the stamp that says you have the right to do stuff hmm. with this music made. So it's, you know, copyright, literally, the words copyright are one of the rights you have. You have the right to make copies to of make it. To make copies. You have the right to perform it. You have mm -hmm. the right to, you have the right to distribute it. You have the right to, you know, all of these things that you want to do with it, if you're the independent artist, for example, who owns it, you want to be the one that has the rights to do that stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, what if we got done with the record, everyone said, we all have the right. We all contributed. <laughs> we all helped make it. So, you know, so now your background musician says, you know what? I'm, I'm going to get a TuneCore account. I'm going to sell it. This mm -hmm. is great. Gosh, mm -hmm. I've never... I've never played drums so well in my life. Or, you know, or the, the, the choir member number 75. <laughs> like, gosh, I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and remix that. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it on my YouTube page way before you, the artist, even has released your record. These are like, some the problems. Is, you want to control what's done with this thing that most likely you're paying for, uh -huh. right? That you and that features you as the artist. And so you've got to be clear. Hey, everybody, thank you for your participation. And, you know, either thank you for sewing in to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I may not owe you any money, but I might. Here you go. Here's your pay for your services. Right. Thank you very much. And you want to be clear. Please, everybody, share tonight's show. I have on the line with me Mrs. Heather Beverly, uh, the world's <laughs> most recognizable. And no, I'm saying the world because you are. You are a, such a gem, Heather. The information you're giving, a lot of times what people, artists will look over, you know, like a, a interview like this or won't pay attention. Like, I don't need that. You know, I'm good. I just, I'm going to make my music and get out there. And then we end up in these situations where, now you got a lot of these legal issues and having to go to court and you yeah. need to connect with someone like Heather Beverly as soon as possible. Well, Heather, I have someone on Facebook who has a question and then I have one, one more quick scenario for you before we go. Uh, Gerald okay. Irvin, he said he'd like to know when you're recording and you have an agreement saying, saying work for hire, does that help you out with the services? So I guess he's saying, does the work how is, does the work for hire cover you? I'm assuming that's where he what he means. Um, well, work for hire is a term of art, if you will, a phrase of art. It is a name of a type of a document, um, but just the title work for hire alone doesn't necessarily get you the result you're wanting. If if what he is asking is, um, will a work for hire agreement make it clear that I at the end of the services you've performed that I own it, thank mm -hmm. you very much for and participating, mm -hmm. it depends. Because that work for hire form has to have the right language in it. Right. Um, that's clear enough and articulates what it is. I mean, you know, it's all of these things and these documents that, that, that lawyers create uh, for people are based on various parts of the law, mm -hmm. right? So there's Copyright Act that talk about how you hire someone, you do work for hire agreements, and there's certain language that's reflected 
um, according to what the law says the language is supposed to say. Okay. Um, and so it's not overcomplicated, right? I mean, you want a document that is clear as to what is going on in the relationship between the artist and whom, whomever they're hiring. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yes, you want to work for hire uh, agreement, but I can't just answer generally that, hey, if it says work for hire, you're covered. That's because, you're covered. you know, right. for hire document may not have any of the right words in it. Exactly. <laughs> So, Gerald, if you're still listening and checking out the show, as she said, just make sure it has the proper uh, language in it according to where you are, where you're located. My last quick scenario for you, Heather, um, and after that, we're going to close out the show with one of your other well-known famous clients. He has had so many big songs, and he's one of my personal favorites because he's my pastor, uh, Pastor (laughs) Charles Jenkins. We're going to close out the show with his huge song, Awesome, which I know you you are and were connected to. But I want this really quick last scenario uh, deals with performances when you're out performing as an artist maybe not necessarily recording music but you still have these background singers with you do you need Mm -hmm. to have contracts when you're out when they are when they are performing out with you um you know obviously my general answer in any business situation is that there is clear communication between people so that expectations are managed, okay. right? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of people that take out background singers and go out on tour and all of that, and they don't ever do paperwork, and I know that that's customary in the industry, and, um, you know, but there's also a lot of higher level artists, and even, even not necessarily world touring artists, but other artists who are careful to make sure they do. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you, I, I suggest you do, and this is why. Um, Again, not only is it about what you're paying people um, and having that clearly communicated, but also there may be rules and regulations and certain expectations you have as an artist as to the conduct mm-hmm. of the people that you tour with. I mean, mm. I was over with a client who, um, you know, hired a band to go with them, and one of the musicians was not, we'll just say in the evenings, was not acting and conducting themselves in mm-hmm. accordance with the expectations and reputation Mm -hmm. (laughs) and they wanted to be clear that I can dismiss you if you are not you know kind of playing by my rules if you will um, or missing rehearsals or whatever just not being the professional I need you to be or performing at the standard I need you to be you you want to know that it's clear to them that you can terminate them at any time and Mm -hmm. maybe you don't owe them any more money as opposed to them thinking well you hired me for the tour and so pay me the rest of the tour and I'll go home. Right. right? Mm-hmm. So it's just about managing expectations. And, you know, I want, I really hope your listeners leave this kind of session, not just thinking that lawyers are it's just all about paperwork and it's just always about writing things up. Sometimes it's about what we're doing. You've heard the word counselor, mm-hmm. right? Attorneys and counselors, people say, hey, counselor. Mm-hmm. You know, attorneys give you advice. Yeah. They use the wisdom that we've learned from the experiences and the L's that other people have taken Mm -hmm. to try to help you in your career. Um, We have contacts, we have experiences, we have uh, been a part of of situations that can help you be more prepared, uh, that can help you think about this thing that you may want to be your career from a long-term standpoint. Um, And so don't just look at us as the boring paper pushers, Mm -hmm. right? value that we have to your overall team. I work with my clients' managers. Mm -hmm. I interface with labels. Sometimes, you know, we're expanding the brand. It's not just the music. You know, there's Mm -hmm. deals to do. We're doing clothing lines. We're doing uh, film and TV content. We're, we're, you know, we're putting together tours. We're looking for endorsements. I mean, there's just a myriad of things that we can be as a resource. Um, In addition to, yes, We'll do your paperwork for right. you. And so when you're looking for a lawyer, you really want to find someone that can be an addition to your team and really takes the time to get to know you and what your personal goals are. We're not just these factories of paperwork <laughs> that you think you could just go find and download off the Internet. Right. You should be learning something. Uh, it should be expanding your awareness and really preparing you to go out there and operate like the business that you are. 
Well, everybody, I have learned and gained so much wisdom and information tonight from this interview. Um, I Actually, I would love for you, if possible, to even come back on the show again. And maybe when you're, you know, when you're in in town, we can have you right here uh, live in the studio. I would love because I, I would love to talk more about this because I know it's needed and necessary. And we're going to the, the show definitely is on my Facebook page and Tabernacle Radio's page for those who missed it. Um, but this. This is the information that you need prior to launching these careers and building your brands. You need to have the information and connect with a valuable and knowledgeable lawyer such as Mrs. Heather Beverly. Well, thank you, Heather, so much for being on the artist stage tonight. I really appreciate it. And like I I said. and this was really fun. I really enjoyed myself. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. And we're going to close out tonight's show. Um, and Heather, I know I'll be speaking with you real soon. And we'll chat later, hopefully, to have you back on the show. My pleasure. And everybody, please connect with her. She is on Facebook. She's on Instagram. Heather, can you give them your contact information on um, how they can connect with you? Sure. I'm on all platforms um, with at H Beverly Law. And my website is www.hbeverlylaw.com. I'm also on Instagram as Heather Beverly ESQ. So either H Beverly Law or Heather Beverly ESQ. So please connect with her. She is the.